Good day on, on YouTube, brothers and sisters. I'm going to go real brief with a devotional today. In light of what I was reading this morning, first of all, I would like to wish all you all on uh, YouTube that will see this a blessed Good Friday um, as we commemorate and remember what our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, did for us on dying at the cross of Calvary. Um, these last couple of days, as I reflected a little bit on Holy Thursday and Good Friday, I'm just reminded of the humility of Christ that on Thursday, he washed disciples' feet, dirty feet, something that was tended to be done by slaves in that day. Think of this, the God, the creator of the universe, washing dirty disciples' feet. And then today, dying on a cross in agony for some six hours, and yet not complaining, not being angry at those that did these harsh things to him. He said about his killers, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The example that Christ left for us, brothers and sisters, should resonate in our hearts and minds. This humility of Christ is um, a blessing and also a conviction to me personally. As I was reading this devotional today, um, from a man by the name of Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Spurgeon is quite often called the Prince of Preachers, born in 1834 and died in 1892. Um, great man of God, a great mind. And today he was speaking in this devotional from Ephesians, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. In it, he was talking about the church of Ephesus and how the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked that church now this church outwardly looked perfect and fine. They did not put up with heretical teaching. They were very sound in their preaching and teaching, but they left their first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. I find that this is tempting for those that do public ministry, whether on Facebook or any other social media outlet, um, pastors, deacons, music ministry leaders, uh, evangelists, whoever it might be, the tendency is, is that we tend to um, put up with sound teaching and doctrine, but we, we tend to lose our first love when we put the ministry before the minister. Recently, I was talking to a young man on Facebook, a good Christian guy who does, um, like I do, these um, live stream videos at times. And he talked to me about how he was so discouraged that he wanted to leave the ministry. And I said, why do you want to leave? And he basically was telling me that he has like a thousand friends and followers on Facebook and hardly anybody ever responds and puts likes or comments to anything he posts. Now, before we get self-righteous and judgmental, I think that it's a temptation that we all struggle with. It's something that's in our flesh to want to be patted on the back, uh, to get um, good compliments and, and what have you, and it does feel good. Um, Proverbs 27, 2 says, let your praise come from others. So it is nice when others praise you and thank you. But let me remind you, brothers and sisters, the middle verse in the whole Bible, Psalm 118, verse 8, says that it is better to put your confidence in God than your trust in man. Yes, it'd be nice to get the pat on the back, the likes, the comments. I do devotionals, live stream a devotional pretty much every day on Facebook. Yes, I look to see sometimes who is responding. Sometimes there's a couple of thousand views. Sometimes there's only a couple of hundred views. And the tendency is in our flesh is to say, what is wrong? Get down when there's only 100 or 200 uh, views. But the problem is, is that when we have a couple of thousand views, the tendency is we could get puffed up and proud and kind of want that pat on the back that uh, we want from others. You see, brothers and sisters, our praise should come from God and not other people. I think a lot of times we lose our first love. We forget our first love, even though we might hold on to sound preaching and teaching. We might be very effective in music ministry. We might be gifted preachers and teachers as evangelists or pastors. But the, the temptation that we have at times is to forget that this is all for the glory of God. 
A couple of scripture verses that give me comfort um, personally are Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, where it speaks that God's word will not return void, but will be sent out for the purpose which God will have it to do. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. So you see, brothers and sisters, whatever we do for God from a pure heart, God will see to it that it'll accomplish what he wants it to do. Let us put Christ first, brothers and sisters. Whoever we might be, whatever, wherever God might have us, and let us not lose our first love. You see, in the days of Jesus, when he was on this earth, throughout the Gospels, people came to him, but they wanted the praise of men more than the praise of God. As I said, the subscripture verses I also remember is this middle verse in the whole Bible, which is Psalm 118, verse 8, which says, It is better to put your confidence in God than your trust in man. Let us keep our hearts pure, brothers and sisters. The days are coming and might even be here now in the last days before Christ returns. As 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 says, Many will put on a form of godliness but deny the power therein. A lot of people have the show, but they don't have the go when it, goes, when it comes to ministry. I know it's work. I, I, at times I even say to my wife, uh, as I do a live stream video on Facebook, I don't have much time to even prepare notes or anything. A lot of times I just wing it and I thank God, you know, in the 33 years and his mercy and grace that he has saved me. He's given me a knowledge of the scriptures, some verses, and to be able to apply it to our lives personally each and every day. But this is a reminder for me to not forget my first love, as Spurgeon was saying today. To not want that pat on the back from other people all the time and the praise of man. You see, Nicodemus in John chapter 3 came to Christ in the nighttime because he was afraid of those around him, the other Pharisees. But in John chapter 19, we see the boldness of Nicodemus with Joseph of Arimathea as he boldly and openly took Christ's body off the cross and buried it in Joseph's tomb. You see, he even had to grow Nicodemus as he became born again to not worry about what people think, not worry about what people say, but as long as we do what we have to do faithfully to the Lord, he will send forth his word. God bless you all today as we reflect on Good Friday. Um, before the crown, there's the cross in anyone's life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 says that he learned obedience through what he had to suffer. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 says that Christ suffered, leaving us an example to follow. Whatever it is you're going through today, brothers and sisters, we live in a world that there's much pain and suffering. Job 14.1, Job said, A man born of a woman is a few years and many troubles. And Psalm 34.19 says that many of the afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. This life ain't easy, brothers and sisters, but it wasn't easy for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as Ephesians 5.1 says, we are to be imitators of Christ. God bless you all. As I end, feel free to... Examine yourself. Lamentations 3, verse 40, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, both say, examine yourself. Be honest with the Lord. Have you left your first love? Have you forgotten Christ, even in ministry, wherever God has you? Return, brothers and sisters. Repent. Change your heart and mind. God bless you all this day. Take care. Bye.